Okay, so thank you. So guys, um, maybe we would love to receive a bunch of uh, questions from the last three tutorials that we've had. So Tadese, maybe you can go first. Okay, good afternoon. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you today, so you can proceed. Okay, actually, I have a question on the task issues, not on the tutorials, after all. Uh, on task three, uh, it is briefly given on the document of week zero, uh, but still in the folder, we haven't get the challenge, yeah? Only on Wednesday, it has one modeling tutor example, and the other is tutorial document. So if uh, it is possible, uh, please share us the challenge of this day three. You, you are not quite sure of the challenge that is there in, in the day three? On the, on the classroom, we have uh, one uh, exercise which says submit the github link for task three but uh, here uh, it is not specifically given in the folder is it task three is a sentiment analysis only or both sentiment analysis and the topic modeling as it is described under the week zero document the task three is described under the week zero um, document so if you want to find the task that you're supposed to do for task three it is um, described under the week zero document does that answer your question okay could we use the same file for uh, sentiment analysis and the topic modeling the one you have shared us on the tuesday Oh, the one that was shared on, on the Tuesday part is just meant to give you a guideline. Which CSV data we will use? Um, the CSV data that you will use is the, the one for the economic that was given, um, the one that you got when you forked from Ten Academy. So that is the data that you're supposed to be analyzing. That answers your question, Tadesa. Okay, somehow it is clear, but uh, what uh, confused me is I am bothered with uh, two data. That is uh, the data which is shared on Tuesday, which says cleaned fintech data. And uh, on the first day, we get the data of uh, uh, economic. So that data of economic is the one that you are supposed to analyze till the end. Up to the end. Yes. Could we use up to the end that one? Could you use? That one up till, till the end. Um, I, I can't get what you're asking clearly. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. So I can see there's a question from the chat. Someone's asking. Uh, today's task, um, creating the workflow report and submitting the link. Yeah, that is the, the task that is required today. Do we have someone else with a question? Um, so 
So I also saw someone asking if we are supposed to use the same repo till the end. Um, and um, the answer is yes, the repo that you have is the one that you will use to the end of week zero. Do we have someone with a question on the topics that uh, have been tackled? Yes, your hands, Samuel. Okay, thank you. What exactly are we supposed to do on today's task? We're gonna do a Jupyter network of the pre-processing for the data we cleaned, or is it an other and there will be confused? Okay, so, um... On, on task three, you're supposed to do a uh, data exploration and pre-processing. Um, the codes that you fixed uh, in step one um, are the ones that uh, are the, for the module that you are going to extend so that you can do, um, you can read the data, uh, you pre-process that data, and then you can now get to the data exploration and the, visual, the, the visualization of the data. And then after that, you will handle um, topic modeling uh, and sentimental analysis. Um, those, I think those two topics were covered um, today and partly yesterday. So you will write a code um, with um, the scikit-learn uh, and other packages. And with those codes, you are to handle sentimental analysis. So you can do this using um, the Jupyter Notebook. Um, I think it will be easier for you to do it in Jupyter Notebook. So that is what is expected for task three. Okay, sorry, this one. So uh, am I supposed to use the, the, the CSV file which was uh, uh, produced from the cleaned uh, Python file? Am I supposed to use that as an input for the today's task? or do it again on uh, Jupyter? Um, so there's this um, data that you're supposed to generate using the codes that you were given. Um, the task one and task two, have you been able to do task one and task two? Yes, yes. So there's a data that you're supposed to generate when you do task one and two. Yes, right? I have that one, yes. Yes, so that data that you generate is the one that you're supposed to analyze. So I, I will continue from that using that generated CSV file as an input and then uh, explore that uh, CSV file, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Do, do we have someone with a question again? Yes. Um, Hello? Oh yes, Faith, you can proceed. <clears throat> yeah, um, so I have a question. Uh, in um, extract data frame, we, we are supposed to create uh, a column called uh, sentiment, and uh, we have other columns like uh, polarity and subjectivity. So is this uh, sentiment something you can get from the uh, JSON file, or we are supposed to get it from uh, those two other columns? Uh, you're asking if the polarity and uh, uh, subjectivity can give a uh, sentiment or if there is any other way to get a uh, sentiment from the JSON file itself. Okay. Um, Musa, can you be able to handle the question? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I think so you, you have to it has to come from your model right that is the output of your model that's the sentiment uh as, is that i'm not sure if so you are looking at tutorial from <clears throat> which is listed in the sentiment analytics notebook is that correct uh no uh from from the 
uh, from the first uh, py file that we we have to debug. Um, so under oh, columns, yeah. there is a, a column called sentiment. Yeah. So I thought maybe in the data frame we, we create, we, we have to find that column. Oh, uh, that is in the in the um, Trida um, GitHub uh, code. Is yes. that where it's coming from? Uh, okay, give me a second to take a look at it. I'll, I'll get back to you shortly. Thanks. Got it. Um, in the meantime, I think we can have um, Ken. Ken, Ken Wakura, I can see you. Your hand, your hand is raised. Okay, maybe. Um, do we have someone with a question? Yeah, I do have one question. Yes, please. If I may. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is this is this supposed to be a Q and A? I mean, I'm I'm not sure. I thought it was a tutorial, or it was is it just a question and answer uh, session? So we decided to have a question and answer session because we have covered uh, what is expected up to day three. We were supposed to um, cover uh, MLOps, um, topic modeling, and sentimental analysis, and we have been able to cover those in the last three lectures, that uh, three tutorials that we've had. So um, we have this as a Q and A session so that we can be able to address the issues of um, that could rise in the three tutorials that we had. Um, sorry, I want to ask uh, a question. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, from our data, we from the extract um, data data frame Python script. So um, I I've done that and I've done the clean task. I'm in task theory, but then there is an issue I'm having with the code, which uh, I'd like to confirm. Uh, the issue is uh, is the the uh, favorite favorite count and the retreat count, the favorite count rather. So I want to be sure if we are picking the favorite count from the tweet, that is from the tweet um, object or inside the retweeted status. There's because I I'd like to be sure of what I'm doing. Is it because this retweeted status is having the, uh, its own its own um, objects also? So inside it, we have the user ID, we have uh, each other ones also, and we have favorite count also. We we have um, other um, sites also, like um, we have followers count, we have friends counts also inside the retweeted status object. So I want to be sure that are we checking the favorite count inside the retweeted status object or the favorite count instead inside the tweet object? Okay. Um, okay, I don't know if Anastasia, can you, can you, can you be able to handle the question? Um, um, so I think maybe Anastasia will be able to handle that in a few. Let's, let's hear from maybe Ken Wakura, you have something? Uh, just one. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Ken, we can hear you. Can you proceed? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to say something about the sentiment that was asked earlier. So for the sentiment, I think we are supposed to use the 
that module we imported the text text blob it has a function to calculate the sentiment for for the tweets it calculates the polarity and subjectivity so we are, we are supposed to modify that code and use that the the functions in text blob to calculate polarity and subjectivity of each tweet thank you okay thank you um uh, musa sorry, you had I'm something i'm sorry ken just a quick question uh for yes, ken what 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 is a package that can do sentiment analysis i didn't get the question afisa uh, okay. is talking of the text uh, blob. I, I think it's, it's a text blob yes okay thank you okay um we have caleb i i had a question uh on on tuesday uh yeah, week week zero we we uh we have a, a file that is called clean fintech data is that the data that we're going to use to do today's assignment huh? um the file that is called clean teach data clean fintech data Well, I am not very sure if I have seen that file. You can check on on any the shared folder that you are shared with for Tuesday. When you go to Tuesday, when you open it, there is what you call clean fintech data CSV. No, that, that, that is not the data that you're supposed to use in week zero. That 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 data that is there mm. was only meant to be there for the tutorial. Okay. It is not the one that is supposed to be used. The okay. data that you're supposed to use for um, the week zero uh -huh. is the economic data that uh, the economic data set that was provided. Okay. So the one that is um, there is for it was meant for um, the tutorial. Okay. So the data that you're supposed to use is that after we have cleaned the code, there is a data frame that you're going to get at the end of that. Eh? Yes, the data that you're supposed to use is the one that yeah, the economic data set that was given. Okay, thank you. Did, did you have Musa? Musa? Uh, Yes, Desmond. Um, I wanted to say that um, Anastasia didn't quite get the question, uh, so I'm not sure if the student can repeat the question. She she wrote in in the text in the chat that she didn't quite understand the question. Um, I'm not sure if she was having internet connection problems, but maybe if the person can can repeat so that she's able to take it on. Okay, I believe it was uh, Victor Victor Olufemi. You you can come up with your question again so that. Can understand the question. Victor, can you hear us? Yes, please. Can you come again? Thank you. Um, could you could you repeat your question? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, my question was: uh, We have. Um, favorite count on the tweet object and then we have another favorite count inside the retweeted count object likewise um test also so which one are we going to use is it the one inside like outside the um tweet contest or the one inside the retweeted status because the retweeted status is having another object also when I ran the code, there was another object inside the retweeted status which has user and everything. But it's kind of the same with the Twitch object, but I think there is difference, slight difference between the favorite count of it and probably friends count and followers count of it other than 
the one on the tweet object. So my, my question is that, are we using the favorite count of the tweet object that has created at an orders or the one inside the retweeted status? And likewise for um, test also, are you using the test of the, uh, of the user, user object or the test of the um, yeah, retweeted status object? Thank you. OK. OK, so I think you can just choose uh, the attributes on the tweet object because uh, it's the like the parent, the parent root. Just use the ones from the tweet object. OK, OK, all right, thank you. Um, yes, Musa. Uh, if maybe I can add to what Anastasia is saying, um, I suspect that, you know, for most of, of, of these questions in terms of uh, what you must return, uh, for example, <coughs> uh, the question that another student was asked, face was asking me now about the sentiment and polarity. When you, when you make a change in your function, you run the test, right? You run, uh, I think, Python, my, uh, space minus M, space unit test, uh, space test slash, I think it's test, uh, what's the test name? In test, it's test extract data frame. You will see that the result of the test will either be correct or wrong. So if you still get an error after fixing that function, it means you didn't do it right. So the tests are supposed to guide you in terms of, you know, what is the correct answer? Because that's what the tests are doing. They expect uh, a certain answer that must be returned. So if you you use a, a, a field that is not what you're supposed to use, you'll get an error. But if you use the correct one, then the test will pass. So um, <clears throat> uh, I think Faith, I, I replied to Faith. So that's, that's the first thing. The next thing is that uh, Faith was asking a question about the sentiments, uh, which I've replied uh, via text, via chat, but if other guys haven't uh, seen it, uh, I think uh, in the, so we're looking at fix uh, extract data frame. So uh, the, the field there is sentiment, polarity, subjectivity. So what you need to look for is what is that function uh, within, uh, within the the file that you have, in this case, fix extract data frame, that will return your sentiment. So if you just search for sentiment, you'll see where you should need to return it from and what the actual fields are. So here we have, I think in line, from line 44 to line 46, in fix extract data frame, there's a uh, def uh, find sentiments. That's the function that you need to edit. So that you see that, so the return, um, the return of the function, it says polarity and self subjectivity, but where is that defined in that function? It doesn't exist. So your job basically there is to make sure that you calculate or you, you, you figure out how to get the polarity uh, from the text and how to get the subjectivity from the test, uh, text and return that basically. And that, that, that should pass the test. Okay, thank you. Did we have someone? Um, okay, uh, Eden, I see Eden is asking a question if, um, are we supposed to do the report using diagrams or in the form of text? Um, um, okay, I don't know if maybe, Anastasia, can you answer? Yes, I can answer that. Uh, the report states that uh, you come up with a, a diagram, a workflow diagram, and you should also explain. You can't just you can come up with a diagram and explain the steps in the diagram. It also requires you to note the attributes you need for the machine learning pipeline. So in addition to the diagram, text should also be used. Many people are asking if it's also a PDF or yeah, it's a PDF file, and the number of pages have not been given any limits. I think just uh, speak your mind out on that report. Okay, so so we have uh, 
Michael, Michael. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, yesterday I was trying to work on the testing part, but it was failing too, so I was trying to fix it today. And I, will, uh, I saw that uh, test cases given were not the test the, uh, in the data set. So I was trying to change the test cases. So uh, is there any way to get uh, test cases, for example, uh, the hashtags to add to uh, supply to my test case? How can I get that one? How can I access my JSON file? Is there any simpler way or is there any way that I can get the JSON file uh, each, 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 each entities? Maybe that is, that's confusing me that's why. Okay, so um, uh, I don't know, Musa, can you be able to answer that? Uh, so what's the question about the JSON file? Um, what is it trying to convert it to or, or put with? Yeah, I'm not sure what he wants to do with the JSON file, if you can be a bit clear on that. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the, there was a test that is testing our extract, uh, the, the, the extracting Python file, right? Uh, the fixed extract data frame, that file. Yeah. That uh -huh. file is extracting a JSON file, right? Yes, yes. Um, this is uh, after inline 128 in the main uh, of, of the function, the main part of the function, you read JSON. Uh-huh. Is that yeah. what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what's your question? Uh, okay, okay, well, just let, let me see it again and I'll come back. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, but maybe uh, while you, you look at it again, uh, I think, so basically this, this file, this, um, COVID-19.json needs to be uh, replaced by the new files that they've given you. So that's what you need to do there. So there's a file, previously it was COVID-19.json, but there's a, I think the, the other tutors have told you which files they are. So that's the, the new files that you must use. I'm not sure, yeah, if it's one file or multiple files, but that's the new files that you must use for that, for that line. Uh, maybe the other tutors can be more clear in terms of which file it actually is. Uh, but I think it, it's there. Okay, so we have Biniam. <clears throat> okay, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, Biniam can proceed. Okay, first, thank you guys for asking such good questions. Uh, and of course, uh, our tutors for your very helpful feedbacks. I'm learning a lot. Uh, my question is, uh, what exactly are the two variables, polarity and subjectivity? And what's their difference from sentiment? You're asking the difference between um, the sentiment, polarity, and uh, subjectivity. Yes, basically, yes. OK. Um, Musa, Musa, can you be able to answer the difference? It's it's a bit tricky, but I think uh, if you look at the, because this is okay. Just give me one second to to uh, so I can give a proper answer. Uh, but maybe um, so so okay. So let me just explain it. You know, as English. So so like how polar polarity would be, you know, like whether it's negative or positive, and subjectivity would be, you know, it 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 really depends. Or, or there's, it's not like a, it's not technically correct or wrong, uh, but it's really dependent on on maybe the person. It's, it's not really factual. That's what that word would actually mean. Uh, but let me uh, dig into the data set so I can come up, come back with a with a proper answer. But from an English perspective, that's what subjectivity means, and polarity would just mean you know how polarizing is it? Is it you know a positive effect or a negative effect? Uh, but I can come back with a more uh, concrete answer in a second. Okay, sure. Um, so, so we have Fiseha. Yeah, uh, actually, my question is kind of related to the previous question. Uh, say we understand the English meanings of polarity and subjectivity. Uh, how exactly are we? 
I mean, I don't need you to tell me the exact, exact thing we do, but I, if you can guide me on how we can extract the sentiment from the polarity and the subjectivity of one's tweet. If it's, uh, if you get me. Okay. So, so you're I mean, asking how to step? get... If we got the polarity, the sentiment out of uh, the polarity and the subjectivity attributes, what are we supposed to do next after we uh, extracted the polarity and the subjectivity from the tweets? What is the next step to produce a uh, sentiment? Okay. I think we can have a Kura then and then we answer your question. Okay. Uh, Ken? Okay, just needed to make a bit of a clarification to that part of polarity and subjectivity. Guys, if you check at the the extract data frame, that file, that .py file, at the top, we are importing a module called text blob. So that module, it's kind of a natural language processing module. It's it looks at the text inside the tweet and tries to calculate a value for the polarity and a value for subjectivity. So you can get either a positive value or a negative value. And from it, you can determine if the text is subjective or not, but they are calculated for you. So for subjectivity, you can base it on either polarity or, I mean, the sentiments. Sentiments can either be that function for calculating the sentiment, you return two values, the polarity and subjectivity value. So the, the result are numbers like zero point something or negative zero point something, something like that. So you calculate the polarity and subjectivity for each tweet, then you append it to the data frame as one of the columns, both of those two values. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe that that answers your question, Fiseha, um, Michael. Um, yeah, I can so see. Um, you so yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, Desmond, to interrupt you. But just a quick uh, uh, thing. Uh, I don't know if I get this right, but he's uh, as Ken is saying, uh, sentiment is kind of actually uh, a product of two things, right? That is a subjectivity and polarity. So basically, if we get the two, we are actually, we actually got the sentiment, if I get that right, Ken. Um, yes, and that is provided by the text. Okay, Musa? Okay, um, yeah, I wanted to say that I've posted uh, some example code uh, in the chat, uh, if they can take a look at it in terms of how to actually compute uh, the sentiment and how to compute the well sentiment, which also contains polarity and subjectivity. Uh, but yeah, what Ken was saying, I, I agree with it. Um, yeah, so I think uh, also Anastasia would like to add something. Yes, yes, Anastasia. Okay, so as uh, it's already been told, the sentiment analysis specific is used uh, to understand the tweet. What uh, is this tweet? The emotion in this tweet. So polarity specifically gets to know the emotion. Is it a positive emotion or a negative emotion? If the value given is a positive, then it is a positive statement. If the value is negative, it is a negative statement. Subjectivity, on the other hand, will deal with whether the text was actually factual or just based on a personal opinion, emotion, judgment. So they, I think the higher the value of subjectivity, the more it is more of a personal opinion than facts. Is that clear? Yeah, I think that is clear. So if you say how you um, also understand that we have to do a sentimental analysis so that we are, we are able to get the polarity and subjectivity. Uh, we have uh, 
Not great? Not great, Chip Kirui. Okay, maybe not great. Um, hello, oh, sorry. Right. Um, so I had a question on unit testing. So I noticed that from the code given, uh, there's already a code for tests. Um, so were we to write a new code for testing or just um, run it as it is? Oh, or you're asking which task? To add for you to test. You're asking for which task? Is it task one or task two? Task one. Or task one. Yeah. Um, what code specifically, which file specifically are you asking? Um, there is, it's uh, uh, under tests, there's a code, there's already code um, for testing the file. The test extract data frame. So you are supposed to fix that? Uh, no, we're not supposed to, f it doesn't have any errors. Um, I was wondering, um, do we need to write a new code to test or is this the code for testing? Okay. Um, let me ask Anastasia to answer your question. Okay. If I may, just a quick... Uh, yeah, please, uh, Margaret, if I you think may. I understand your question. I think I understand your question. I was asking the same question on Slack uh, I'm not 100% okay. sure okay. if the answer I'm going to give you is correct, but the thing is, we need to, when you run the test files, uh, they're supposed to generate a, a result, basically indicating the, uh, the correctness of the methods we wrote in the extract yeah. uh, data frame uh, file. So... Yeah. At the end of the uh, output, you'll see results displayed. There are around 14 uh, test cases, and for each of the uh, functions we wrote on the extract data frame. So at the beginning, all of them are uh, going to fail when you run it. All of the tests are going to fail. And I think, and as people told me on the Slack channel, uh, our uh, task is to just make the tests uh, not fail or for the test to become correct. So in order for you to do that, you need to edit the test uh, extract data frame file for the tests to pass, if that's if that makes sense. Um, thank you. It makes sense. I have already edited the bugs and there's no um, there's no, there's no bugs, but there's another snippet of code under tests called test extract data frame PY. Um, is that the one we're using for unit testing? I think Musa Musa's yeah. highlighted how yeah. you do. Yeah, Musa yes, that's the one. So so basically, um, the in within the test subdirectory, there's a file called text uh, underscore extract underscore data frame dot pi. That's the yeah. one that you run to get the errors, right? So basically, it tells you whether that your code is correct or not. Uh, in the chat, I've actually put in uh, the code that you have to run uh, so that that uh, file can give you uh, the errors or you know whether your your tests are passing or not. So you run Python space minus M space unit test uh, space test uh, slash test extract data frame dot pi. So that will return uh, whether your tests are passing or failing. And if you have a failing test, then that's what you need to fix. Uh, it will show you whether you know it could be a syntax error or it could be that you're getting a wrong result or there's no return uh, data in, in in that function. So you fix those functions based on 
what errors you're getting from from your test uh, script. Okay. Um. I'll so I'll find the 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 function on Slack. Yeah, yeah, and also it's here on chat in the in this uh, uh, Google Meet, but I'll also post it now on uh, Week Zero. I'll post the code that you need to run. You okay. run it from the main directory. From the main directory. Yeah, which is your your repo, which is data data analysis. Okay. So you, yeah, so you execute it from there, and it should give you, um, you know, whether your tests are passing or not. I think, yeah, I forget how many tests they are, but uh, those functions in that uh, fix uh, fix extract data frame are the ones that you have, you need to fix. Uh, there's at least ten uh, tests, I think. So that the, those tests need to be passing for for your code to be correct. Okay. Um, yeah. You can ask if you have more questions. <laughs> Just <laughs> one last question. Um, yeah. So you said we run it under the main, the main branch, right? Yes. Yes. There, so, I think the branch is the fix bugs. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's um, the fix. We already changed or renamed the fix bug to clean to its data frame and extract data frame. Okay. So, um, and uh, which uh, file are we going to add that function? So, okay. So the fixes are going to be. So remember, I think in in the instruction, uh, um, Desmond. Yes. Can I share my screen quickly? I think sure. maybe. It, it, would be, it would help. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen now, my great. Okay. Okay. Just let me know if, if, if it's clear. Um, yeah, clear. I can see your screen. You can see it. Okay. So can you see uh, in on the on the right of my screen where my cursor is? So this is the comment that I've put, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the code that you need to run, right? Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you run it, uh, I normally just run it from, from the terminal. So, okay. I, so you can see my terminal? Yeah. Okay, so so this is where I've stored the code that we've cloned from from the tech ten x GitHub repo, right? So yeah. if I look here, these are all the files that are there, right? So this yeah. is when I, when I say from the repo, I mean like the top level directory of your repo, which is where I am now, the and main. this yes, the main, and then uh, yeah, whether the, the branch is main or fixed parts, I don't think it really changes anything. It's just a way to organize your code so that you know what you're working on right okay. so the name of the branch helps you know what you're working on so now when you bring back your code to main basically you're saying this is this is uh this is the the code that i'm going forward with basically this is the code that i'm sure of that it works it does what it needs to do um yeah so but then uh, in terms of the test so there's a test directory there so if i do list tests you see that there's a test extract data frame, yeah. right? File. Yeah. That's the file that contains the test. So if I come here back to uh, to my VS Code, so it's in in here. Okay, I'm just gonna open it, right? And these are the yeah. tests. You can actually read the test. The test will tell you what it's testing, right? Test find status status count. Uh, test find full text. You know. That's what it's mm -hmm. testing. You can actually look at the code to say, you know, what do I need to do to make my test? And you'll see that, okay, so uh, for example, find status count and, and you know, probably uh, these are the, uh, what you're sending to, to this uh, function. It, and, you know, it must give you those answers, right? Yeah. Give you those answers, they must match uh, with what they have here. That's what makes the test pass. So, so when you, you execute, uh, this thing that I'm, I'm showing you here, you know, one sec. I'm just gonna paste here, copy this so it's faster. And I paste it here, right? And then I run. Uh, okay, and then I run it. 
uh, the display for some reason. Okay. Uh, it should be running. It was giving me that all my tests are passing or something is failing. Uh, okay, let me just see. Okay. Just see which branch I'm in. This one. Okay, so I'm in mean, okay. Uh, quickly, I'm just gonna check out fix box. Okay, let me try to run that again. Shouldn't take so long. But anyway, so so when you run this command, right, mm -hmm. what it does is it comes it comes here into your test uh, file, and then, you know, so this starts the execution of your test. And, right. and this, all these tests are going to be executed, right? So all these tests that are here get executed, and then we get... Okay, yeah, so you see, it's, it's just, well, just a bit slow, but you see that I'm getting lots of errors here. Yeah. Right? So this is the commands that I've run, right? Mm -hmm. And this are my errors, right? Some are errors, uh, and yeah, some it's, it's a fail uh, status that I'm getting. So nothing is passing at the moment. Yeah. Right? So what you do is you look at like the first error that you get. Right? It's, it says the test that is failing is test find created time, right? So where's test find created time? Uh, let's see. Uh, test, test find created time. Okay, so this is the this, the file that that is failing, right? This is the test that is failing. It means that whatever um, this uh, test function expects, I'm not retaining it, right? So how do I fix that? Uh, so let's see. Okay, so where was I? So okay, this is the the, the test that's failing. So I, so this is the you see here it says uh, something extract data frame line fifty two in find created type right. So yeah. I copy this and then I go to my fixed extract data frame and then I search for this function right. So this is the function right. So you see what it's retaining. It just says return created at. But what is my thing expecting? It expects dates and times and yeah. a day. So what I have, I have to do is I have to make sure that this code returns uh, what, what I'm having here, what I'm having here. Because the created time should match this. That's what it passes, right? Because it's comparing created at, which is this list of creation times and the result of find created, created time. But uh, I, the question is, do not hard code the answer here, right? Because you can copy this, you could, uh, where am I? Uh, you could copy this, right? Paste it, paste it here and the, the test could pass, but that's not how you, you need to be doing it. Because um, when you're running your, your program in the wild, the created time will change based on other things. So you must do it programmatically. Uh, based on the the JSON file that uh, you have um, you are using here, uh, what's the JSON file? Um, based on on the data from the JSON file, I haven't edited mine, right? But there's a new JSON file with new cheats that you must edit. So your results must come from that JSON file, right? Yeah. And and when you read this JSON, it will transform it into a way that you are able to. Uh, run commands uh, like you know, like find the sentiment on of a tweet, find the number of followers, etc., and then you're able to return them. So that's how you must do it. Um, I'm not sure if that if there's anything that you yeah you are not sure about. You can ask anyone else if they're not sure. But I think generally that's that's the process you need to follow. Um, thank you. That was satisfactory. Okay. Cool. Yeah. cool. All right. Thank you, thank you. That was quite elaborative enough. I think we can have Biniam. Oh yeah, so I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Sure. Okay. Uh, 
I have just one question. I'm just trying to clarify some points. Uh, uh, it's my understanding that uh, in addition to the report, uh, today's objective is to create a model uh, for uh, that's capable of predicting the sentiment. Um, I think we can't hear you clearly, Biniam. We can't hear you okay. clearly. Okay, just what about that? Yeah, Can you hear me that's now? Be that's better. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what I'm trying to understand is uh, the objective. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, today's uh, objective is to create a model that's capable of uh, predicting uh, the sentiment value based on a uh, uh, number of factors. So I think we're supposed to identify independent, uh, dependent and independent uh, variables from the data and uh, uh, obviously, the dependent variable is supposed to be sentiment, uh, so we are supposed to identify independent variables and uh, create a model that takes all independent variables as an input and predicts the sentiment value. Uh, am I clear on that? I, I can't, maybe if someone can hear you clearly, um, I lost you somewhere in the middle. But uh, are you trying to ask, you want to know um, the clarity of the task that is to be done today? Uh, basically, uh, yes, that's it. Okay. So I think we've said the, the, the task that is uh, to be done today is uh, the topic modeling and the sentimental analysis of that data that you um, you, you already have because um, you have already extracted and uh, you have done a part of um, like a data engineering. You have gotten your data, you have um, been able to transform that data from JSON to now a CSV. Now you are to proceed now to do a topic modeling and sentimental analysis with the data that you generate um, from task one and task two. Does that make it clear, Binia? Yes, it's clear. Yes, Nigist. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's not a question. Like, uh, it's for Musa. He, uh, I, I was following him, but in the middle, I lost connection. So, can he, can he, like, go through how he can, how he managed to? fix the problems in the fixed files by using the test like I was lost in the middle if he if we have some time like I see we have like five minutes. Um biggest you 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 would love us to um repeat what Musa did? Or yeah, maybe yeah. The question right. Yeah, if if you have some time, like because I can see we are left with four minutes. Uh, why 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 don't you maybe you check in the recording so that you are able to follow through? Uh, it is going to be launched today. Uh, this one will be live tomorrow. It will be posted tomorrow. Mm. So c can I talk to Mosa like? You yes, yes. Or... Yeah, you can talk to Musa. Um, yeah, um, if I can speak to this man. Yes, proceed. Yeah, uh, she can uh, text me on Slack and then I can go through uh, what I did um, with her. I can, I can guide her there. Uh, yeah, in the interest of time, uh, if, if that's okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I will try. Maybe we can have Biniam and then Fi Seha. I think that those will be the last people and then we close. No, mine was a mistake. Okay, um, I think I, we can go now. Yeah. yeah uh, just as you guys explained for us how we can analyze the sentiments 
can you just give us uh, just a two minutes or one minute uh, explanation about the topic uh, modeling? Okay, so you would love to um, know about topic modeling and sentimental analysis? No, no, yeah, yeah, but you explained to us about uh, sentiment analysis. That was very quite uh, nice. But could you say a few words about topic uh, modeling? Or what, what a topic is? I mean, just a simple one minute or two minute elaboration. Oh. Just about topic uh, modeling, just about the topic part, not the sentiment part. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Um... Mm. Do, do you still have Anastasia in? Maybe if Anastasia is not in, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am. Yes, Anastasia. I think you, you muted again. Yes, Anastasia. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So the way I understand uh, topic modeling, this is uh, mainly on the machine learning side of this data. After conducting the exploratory data analysis, EDA, you will do pre-processing and prepare your data for machine learning. And this is where modeling comes in. You can use libraries like scikit-learn use algorithms uh, like uh, we have the xgb boost we have different algorithms used for machine learning and um, yeah i think this is where modeling will come in general after pre-processing preparing the data for machine learning yeah i, I see here they say you may use word clouds k-means clustering uh, as a simple model for topic modeling. So if you need to understand what k-means clustering and uh, what clouds are, I I think it's there. Maybe that class has already been handled. It will be handled tomorrow. I am not sure. But those are the types of uh, code you'll be running under topic modeling. It's mainly just machine learning. Is that clear? Uh, yeah, it is clear. yeah, it is clear, but uh, the feature we are using to extract the uh, topic modeling is, I think, the general text of the tweet, right? The uh, topic the topic modeling will be done on the feature, namely uh, the text uh, feature, right? I mean... I actually think you can use more than one feature more than one feature for topic modeling. You might, you might use uh, the text features to come up with word clouds, but uh, for k-means, clustering, and other models, I think you can use other features as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank um, you very much. Okay. So thank you, guys. I think we can uh, proceed with the questions in Slack, and um, and then we see how it goes. So I think with that, maybe you can, uh, yes, Musa. Uh, yeah, just to let's add, uh, maybe conceptually, right, uh, what topic uh, modeling is about. So you have a, a tweet or a group of tweets or some text. Basically, you want to figure out what are these people talking about here, right? So we mostly for tweets we have hashtags which actually say okay what is the topic of this tweet or what is you know so it's it's more about that what trying to figure out you know say you didn't have a hashtag could you figure out what the text is talking about basically what the subject is what the topic is what are they talking about so can you derive uh, that that uh, that topic from from just the words that are being used i think conceptually that's what it's about Yeah, yeah. Like the abstract be behind the uh, texts, right? Say again. Sir? Uh, sorry. Like the abstract behind the text. Yeah, the abstract. 
I would say the subject, right? Are you talking about soccer? Are you talking about politics? You know, those kinds of things. Are you talking about biology? Okay. So yeah, can yeah. you figure out, you know, if, yeah, can you figure out from my tweet what subject I'm talking about? And, you know, are I talking yeah. about okay. you know, a soccer game, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Quite helpful. Thank you, Musa. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, I think maybe we can um, wind up um, at that point and then we proceed with the question answers in Slack. So maybe that brings us to the end.